comes off as kind of gray to me. The part is green, so it had this gorgeous ombre effect. Oops, you can't even see what I'm doing. No one called it out in the comments and I was surprised. And this light, it like mimics the sun. Here's the little setup that I have. A little goes a long way. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm preparing for another big launch that's happening in September. And I've already shown you the soaps that I plan on releasing for that launch, but I am going to be making a whole bunch of candles for that launch. I have been testing and making the candles for quite some time now. I really wanted the candles that I released to be perfect. So I'm ready now. I'm at the stage where I'm gonna start making them so that I can sell them to you. <laughs> and I'm not sure what else this video is going to entail. I've just been really liking the casual nature of the last couple of vlogs and it seems like you guys have been too. So that's probably what this vlog's gonna be like, just taking you along with me as I prepare for that launch by making some products and showing you what Kale and I get to throughout our week. So let's get started. Hello and welcome again to the studio. And I wanted to show you the vessels. I showed you it a little bit in the last video, but I didn't really show you how they come from Eau Rouge. Each candle jar has its own little box. These are so cute and definitely is a good idea to keep them so that when you sell these candles, you have a, a nice little container box to sell with it to give that candle just a little bit more protection. So here is one of the other jars. I think I showed this, this is the, the white frosted jar. And I like it. It just, I, it comes off as kind of gray to me. So I don't know if I want to use this in my collection. I know for a fact that I love the green olive jars. Oh, here is a blue tinted jar. It has like a blue, a blue tint to it, blue gray tint to it. Here it is next to the white, gray they look, very, they look very similar let's see other colors here oh okay here is a black a black tinted one this is really really beautiful this is so halloween vibes and i just really like it the gold caps are beautiful too gives off an apothecary vibe i'm glad one of the first ones i opened was that green one because I think it's definitely my favorite so far. And speaking of the green one, here is that olive jar. And I don't know if you guys noticed with the candle that I was burning in this color jar, the first half of it is orange from the flame and the bottom part is green. So it had this gorgeous ombre effect. Show what I mean over here. It is so, so pretty. Oh, okay. And here is a peach tinted jar and these jars were called the Jasper jars. So if you're curious about these, there's a link down below to Morouge's website. And I honestly think that these jars are really, really nice. Candle vessels are so expensive these days. So when it comes to selling your candle, make sure that you're factoring in the cost of the vessel itself. It's gonna be a huge chunk of your production costs. Candles are not cheap to make, that's for sure. And if you're doubting if anyone is gonna buy a $30 plus candle, there are definitely people that will do that. Many candle makers have found success selling their $30 plus candles that are this size all the time. So as long as you have a really beautiful brand and a great concept that speaks to people, it's possible. I think I will put all of my pumpkin patch scents in all of these jars and then have a choice in the product listing about which color people want. And that's kind of fun, giving people choices. Don't wanna give people too much choice though. That's really pretty. I don't do a ton of candle making on the channel, but whenever I do, the views are pretty good. I feel like you guys like it when I make candles. I should probably do more candle making. And whenever I get a package from Moorish Canada, I just, I love featuring their stuff. It's great quality amazing products. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. My batch is five. I have like a master recipe and it fills about five of these jars. So I'll just 
multiply that by however many candles I want filled. But before I start melting any wax, I'm going to stick on the wicks to the jars because the way I do it, it needs some time for the glue to set before I pour anything hot in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So for wicks, I'm gonna be using CDN candle wicks and I'm using the size four, size number four. And the way I stick these on is each wick has, or at least the ones that Marouge sells, each wick has a nice base already stuck to it. I'm gonna use this clear adhesive sealant on the bottom of these to stick them to the jars. And I got this tip from Adienne from Adienne Arsenault. And I have tried a lot of ways to stick wicks onto jars. And I noticed that the few methods that I've tried using the sticky tabs, using hot glue, they've, a few of them have come off as I was pouring the wax into the candle, which is not great. <laughs> but ever since I started using this method, they've been stuck on there extremely well. And that really puts my mind at ease because I do not want to be selling candles to people whose wicks move around, you know? So safety is my priority with candles and you can never be too safe when it comes to candle making. So I'll just stick this to the bottom get it to the middle as much as I can. Oops, I can't even see what I'm doing. My bad guys. I'm gonna use my metal chopstick to stick that into the floor of the candle jar. And the way it is in there right now, I could probably pop it off cause it's not quite dry. It'll still move around. So I'm gonna give it some time to solidify and really adhere that wick to the bottom of this jar. So that's one. Now I'm gonna do more. So I am using the CDN candle wicks in that size, but even though I'm using these wick sizes, it's not something that I would just recommend that you use for these jar sizes because each fragrance oil causes the wax to melt in a specific way and you might need a bigger or smaller wick depending on what your testing tells you. And that's so important with candle making is testing. <laughs> Never sell a candle that you have not burnt yourself and not just burnt casually, but burnt all the way to completion. They're called power burns and you basically want to use the candle to the extreme so that when you send it off to a customer, you can anticipate what or how that candle will, will behave um, if they just casually use it or if they decide to just burn it for however many hours straight. And this step is so important. Each and every candle needs this kind of rigorous testing. So we wanna make sure we're selling good quality products that aren't going to harm our customers. And it's not just for candles too, everything that you make, everything that you produce, test it and test the heck out of it. And don't be satisfied with just one test that you do on yourself, have other people test it, have other people try it out. Because your preferences might will certainly differ from other people's preferences. Kayla and I have a wedding that we're going to in October and we're so excited for it. These are our friends that were here that had visited us a few weeks ago. And I kind of was a little confusing in my storytelling there. And I didn't, no one called it out in the comments and I was surprised because I mentioned that we went to their wedding in Canada and now we're going to another wedding of theirs. What they did up in Canada that we went to was a very casual, quick ceremony. And so because um, because not a lot of their friends and family could attend that particular wedding, they're doing another one. And that's gonna be a much bigger, more formal wedding. And Kale is gonna be the officiant to that wedding and we are so excited. And I'm telling you, they could not have picked a better person for the job. The wedding's gonna be in California. And I haven't, visited California in a long, long time. The last time I was there, I was sent on a work trip from Apple to go check out the mothership is what they called it. The, the main headquarters in California. That was a really cool trip. I really liked seeing that. It was this giant campus-like facility with a lot of lawn that people were hanging out on. My time in Apple was really interesting. <laughs> It was a big part of my life. I was there for two years, but it feels like I was there for so much longer. 
I am very glad for the experience though, because if it wasn't for working there, I don't think I would have known how much I was capable of in terms of handling stress, in terms of thinking creatively outside of the box and being pretty okay with risk, with trying different things. Cause that is a large part of that culture is thinking outside of the box, um, innovating. This is probably why I change things so much. It's like my Apple employee-ness inside of me, just wanting to continue to improve on things and the perfectionist in me that probably helped me land the job <laughs> coming out because I do want things to be perfect. And I know that I'll never achieve perfection, especially with me doing things all on my own. I, I have been wanting to reach out to graphic designers, to other professionals in the different aspects of my company to, to get, I guess, like, I guess a professional feedback or outcome <laughs> instead of me just trying things a million different ways and maybe getting close to what I was wanting. That it's not a great way to run your business. That's for sure. But I'm just curious. I love learning things. I love trying different stuff. It's not the way I would recommend you guys do things. If you have a concept in your head and you really love it, find a graphic designer that will bring that concept to life. I'm getting closer and closer to doing that as the days go by. <laughs> because I feel like no matter what my efforts are, I, I can't really, I haven't, I'm not there yet. And I can maybe get there after dozens more iterations or I can contact a graphic designer, tell them exactly what I'm looking for and have them use their expertise to create it for me. <laughs> I mentioned this before that I'm not gonna do that until I, I'm truly confident in what I'm trying to create. And I have to be super clear about it because I hate wasting money. I don't wanna spend all that money on a graphic designer to create this whole concept that I'm just going to change my mind on. And I would, I would totally do that. <laughs> I was thinking about the release date for my fall line. And usually I like releasing on the first of the month, but we realized that the first of September is gonna be Labor Day weekend for both the United States and Canada. So a lot of people are going to be worried about different things, not wanting to buy candles and soaps. So I'm gonna push the launch date to the third. And I noticed that a lot of my, my friends yeah, they're friends. <laughs> a lot of people in the soap making community have already released their fall line in, in August. And I realize, and, and now I, and I now understand why they do that because once people start getting into back to school mode, I don't know how interested they're going to be in, in buying candles. I mean, they probably still will be, but not as much as they would be in August. Yeah. I think for next year, I'm going to be launching this fall line much earlier. Do you want to be ahead? ahead of the game, ahead of the crowd. It's funny to think about, but when you launch things on the actual month or season, you're behind already. All right, let's see, I have one more wick and one more jar. Perfecto. Boom. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that wax melting. So I have all of the jars that I want to use for today's production run. Production run? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I have all the jars ready and wicked, and I have my soy wax. Sorry, this is not soy. This is cocoa apricot wax. And I got this wax from Moa Rouge Canada. It burns cleanly, it sets up beautifully, and the throw on this for most fragrance oils is fantastic. Again, with anything, you have to test things because what works for my candle might be different for your candle because of variances in the jar size, variances in the wicks, and also, most importantly, variances in the fragrance oil itself. But I truly love cocoa apricot wax. So I'm gonna take this bowl of cocoa apricot wax and I'm going to melt it down using my two auto machine. And this machine is fantastic, by the way. If you're curious about this guy, I have it linked down below, but it's basically a wax melter that you can set the temperature that you want the wax to be melted to, and it keeps it at that temperature for as long as you want. And this 
big guy is really great for master batching your candles because if you have a specific wax blend that you use all the time, then you can just literally have this stocked full of wax and running, or you can turn it on whenever you have a candle making day and it'll have melted wax ready for you very, very quickly. So I'm just gonna put this, all this wax into here and start it melting. So I'm just about ready to pour. And if you're wondering about this intense lighting, it's because I'm also doing stuff for my social media and it is kind of dark in my studio, even though I have these big windows in front of me, we're underneath uh, a balcony. So it's, it can get pretty gloomy in here. And this light, it like mimics the sun. <laughs> it's so bright. It's like a professional grade light. I'll have it linked down below if you're curious about that. But right now it's shining light into the little setup that I have. Oh, let me just show you, let me just show you. This is really cool. Here's the little setup that I have. And if you zoom in enough, it really mimics a window and a countertop in daylight. And this looks really good in photos. I've tested it a few times. And this is something that I want to do more and more as I work on my social media and my marketing and giving off the vibe, a specific vibe, which I feel was lacking so much in, in my current social media. So that's what I'm working on right now. And if you're curious about the product photography setup, I'll have that also linked down below. But my wax is ready, so I'm going to get that going. Over here, it really does look like daylight from an open window, doesn't it? It's gorgeous, <laughs> this light. Anyways, uh, so I have my picture here and it's teared. And what I'm gonna do is transfer the wax from the to auto into this picture and into here until I get the amount of wax that I need for my pour. I Will I have enough to fit in here? Okay, I might get a bigger picture. Be right back. Okay, I got a bigger picture. <laughs> so let's see, what's a good angle here? Here's an angle that I think will convey what I'm trying to do. And the cool thing is with this wax melter is that you can touch the outside of it and it's not hot. But it does, there's a sticker here that says danger, hands off. So maybe I won't tell you guys to do that. <laughs> Oops. Okay, anyways, let's position you so that I can get access to that spout. I should be able to do it with this little guy. Yep, he tucks in there nicely. Oh my gosh, look at this awful filming angle. I'm sorry. I am sorry. There we go. All right, let's tear this and start pouring. Let's turn this guy over. Okay, how much is this? Okay, so I have my wax in here. And the first candle I'm pouring is going to be my autumn harvest scent or the apple scent. And I'm just gonna pour it into my pitcher. Oh, this smells so good. Mm. I am a sucker for apple scents. Now that's in my pot, I'm gonna stir for at least two minutes. Is it just Washington or are the other states immediately becoming colder? <laughs> we had a good string of pretty awesome weather and then now it's just cold and gray. And I do love fall, as I said many times, but this is not the kind of fall I want. I want leaves turning different colors. I want pumpkin patches and I want the sky to be blue and the air to be just only slightly cooler. <laughs> this is a big jump. Before I pour into my main candles, I'm gonna pour into my setup over there. So let me just prep that. Oh my gosh, I'm getting wax everywhere. Got my phone, yikes. Sorry if this is blinding you guys momentarily, but I wanna show you how I'm gonna get that social media shot. Gorgeous. So that is pretty much the social media magic. And if you wanna see the results of that, if you wanna see the results of all of that, then go check out my social media. I think by the time I have this video posted, I will have posted a few social media things using this background and lighting setup. So. Yeah, check that out. But I'm gonna continue pouring my candles into the rest of these jars 
And uh, yeah, let's just keep going. So, so far I have poured three out of the five scents that I'm doing today. I have done the Autumn Harvest or Apple Orchard scent. I've done the Pumpkin Patch scent. And I've also done a Brandied Pear scent, which smells so, so good. And now I'm gonna be doing a Velvet Figs and Amber fragrance oil. This smells absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh. This is again by Moorish Canada. Mm, this whole video is like a celebration of that company. I love, love that company so much. And yeah, I haven't put my centers in. I'm not stressing out too much about it because I'm just not. I'm probably going to fix the tops regardless. So I'm just doing this, pouring it at my own pace. I'm really pleased with the footage that I've gotten so far using that background. I've waited way too long to do something like that. And I'm so glad that I've finally invested in something. Yeah, let's use this whole bottle. It has a top note of fig, citrus, a middle note of vanilla and cream, and a base of patchouli and amber. It smells amazing. All right, now that I have my fragrance oil ready to be mixed in, I have to go grab my wax. This machine makes candle making so fast and quick and easy. I think out of all the scents that I'm pouring today, the fig one, fig and amber, hmm. fig, cream and amber. Not a big fig fan though. People love figs. Figs have their fan base, but nope, not me. I'm not a big fan of dried fruit in general, and I know you can eat figs fresh, but I've only seen dried figs available in the store. I don't like dried fruit. I don't like raisins. They don't speak to me, you know? They don't vibe. I just got a notification. I think I might have put that my release was in August instead of September. Don't you hate that when you make mistakes? They're so public. Well, it's part of being a business owner. And now the last, well, the last candle I'm doing is Oak and Whiskey. Also by Mo Rouge. It smells like a gentleman's sitting room. I think I described it once as very, was it Bridgerton? I wasn't watching Bridgerton at the time. I might have, I don't know. But it smells like that. Now that I've watched Bridgerton, that smells very much like, oh, I said Downton Abbey. <laughs> Same vibe, you know? It smells like a wealthy person's sitting room. I'm gonna have a fun time naming these scents. It's gonna be a challenge finding names that aren't seasonal <laughs> because I don't know how well these candles will sell. I'm mostly known for my soaps. And if I'm vending in person, candles sell super well, but it's hard to get people to buy candles when you're mainly known for soap online because they don't know what you smell. It's hard. It's a very tough thing to do. And ways you can get strangers to purchase from you is to work on your social media. And like I have been trying to do, trying to set a vibe that people can get the essence of what the scent is just from seeing the scene that you set up. And that might not come naturally to a lot of people. And that's why practice is so important. Even if it means making social media that bombs, that's okay. It's all part of the learning process. And just because a post doesn't do well when you first put it up, doesn't mean it won't or can't pick up steam later on. I'm down to the very last bits here. That's the most I'm gonna get. I'm gonna turn this off now. It's starting to smoke. And now we have come to the wick centering part. I use a few different kinds of wick centerers. There's those, these black ones that I used in my last video, which are really good. But when I'm pouring my candles in a box like this, these don't actually fit at all. So um, I've used these guys that are um, pretty handy, but they move around a lot. And I also use these guys. And you can get these on Amazon. I have them linked my description box, but I basically just move the wick to the center, even though the surfaces start to solidify, I'm okay with that. I will just fix them with a heat gun later. The trick is to remember that the wicks aren't centered because <laughs> once the entire candle solidifies, it's gonna be really hard to fix that. So <laughs> they're pretty simple to use. You just 
Let's put them there. Feed, where's a good shot? Here, here, here. Feed the wick through the pincher. And just move it to the center and it holds it there pretty good. I think I like these guys better than the other kinds of centerers because they're so easy to use and you can get a bunch of them for super cheap. The studio smells fantastic right now. I'm in heaven. And my last one, let's go over here. And there, oh, I have one more over here. You can see that I ruined the top just by putting this in place, but this is very easily and quickly remedied with a heat gun once everything has dried. So no worries about that. And here are all of my candles poured. I have a lot of cleanup to do, <laughs> but I'm gonna put these aside and clean up the studio. And when you see me again, these will be solid and I can finish them off, trim the, trim the wicks, label them, and you can see what these candles look like in their full glory, all labeled. <laughs> hey guys, I am back. It is the next day, no, two days from now from when I last saw you. And my candles are all solid. I will show you what they look like. And you can see that the damaged tops are from when I moved the wick to the center after they had solidified a little bit. But on the whole, the tops are pretty smooth. I'm going to fix these with a heat gun and make them completely smooth and label everything. That's the plan for today. I just got a message from my friend who works in graphic design and kind of marketing. And he just said that September 3rd is a great day to release anything. I'm glad I picked that day. Yeah, I decided on September 3rd because I don't know if I, see that's the thing about talking in videos. I never remember what I told you guys, but the reason why I picked September 3rd is because I want to wait till after Labor Day weekend has passed. So that's why I picked that date. I'm not ashamed to admit that marketing and developing the brand message to customers has been something that I haven't been really good at. And I've kind of been lacking in that department for a long time now, for years now, I would even say. And I think 2025 or the end of 2024 is the year I start to really double down on my brand and how I want my products to be seen, developing the vibe that I want my customers to experience when they use my products. That's gonna be something that I focus on because it really is the most important thing you should be focusing on if you're doing this as a business. It doesn't matter how good your products are. It doesn't matter how good of a quality they are. That should be a given. You should make amazing products regardless, but no one's going to buy those products unless you are able to convince people on the internet that it fits with their lifestyle, it fits with their values, all of that. That's so important to think about. And this kind of thing doesn't come easily to most people. It's There's a reason why people go to school for it specifically. And one of those things, okay, I got this idea on Instagram when I was scrolling. I like to get a lot of my marketing, marketing ideas off of Instagram, seeing what's been working for other companies. But I saw this one company that they're a small business like me and they went on a, they called it a brand trip. And they basically went somewhere and used that getaway as an opportunity to take product photos, to create content for their um, social media. And I was thinking that is absolutely brilliant <laughs> for, because what better way to uh, create a vibe around a product than to actually go somewhere that is that vibe. And as much as I love my home, it's a really great house. It's on the, what is that noise? Something fell over there. It's on the water. There, I'm surrounded by trees. I have a beautiful garden. Sometimes I have to be honest with myself and, and say, and admit to myself that this is not exactly the vibe that I'm going for. Like if I wanted to convey a sense of the mountains or <laughs> the forest, I will need to go to those places and take the time, book the time specifically for the purpose of that trip to take product photography or content for my social media. And that kind of thinking I should have been doing from the get-go, but I haven't. And I wanna do more of that. So that's what Kayla and I are planning. 
right now is a brand trip, a place that we can go where we can bring products and take product photography to um, make social media content, just start laying down the foundation, the bricks for the foundation of the vibe that we want to um, convey. All right, so that is all of the wick holders. Take this heat gun. This is Wagner brand. I really like it. It has two settings, hot and super hot. <laughs> I like to do this on super hot because I can do it very quickly. But yeah, that's what I'm going to start doing right now. Yeah, you can see there's like a big line from when the wick was resting and then I just put it in the middle. Ta-da! Perfectly smooth tops with just a quick blast of the heat gun. So now that all of the tops are nice and smooth, I'm just going to use my wick trimmer to get rid of this, the excess wick. I'm going to label these candles. And for these candles, I decided to go for a more minimalistic aesthetic. Like I said, I'm still playing around with my whole branding and seeing what it, what works, what doesn't. I wanted to try out something more minimalistic to, just to gauge a popular little bit, I guess, or to see if they really come together to, to convey what I'm trying to convey. I've said convey a lot, actually. <laughs> These wick trimmers are not sharp. So here is one of the candles. This is scented in open whiskey by Moor Ridge Canada, and one it's one of my favorite scents. And if you go on their website, which is linked down below, you'll see that this is listed as one of their best sellers and there's a reason why it's amazing. And I decided to name this candle Cellar Door. I really love the movie Donnie Darko. And there's a scene where the teacher played by Drew Barrymore talks about Cellar Door and how that's one of the most beautiful pairing of words in the English language. And I really do think, I kind of agree with that. But I also think it's a great name for the scent as well. Just the whole idea of a cellar and going down some steps where the barrels of whiskey are being stored. I totally get that vibe from this fragrance. It's amazing. Love it. The next candle that I've made is so good. It's called Golden Orchard. And this is a pear scent. It's a brandied pear. And ever since I I smelled this years ago from Mo Rouge Canada. I knew it would make an amazing candle. There's pears in there. There's that brandy and just a little bit of citrus, but it smells amazing. It's refreshing. It's light. And oh man, I, I know for a fact that if I were selling this in person at a farmer's market, it would get snapped up. It would be gone. <laughs> Here is the label for that golden orchard. This next scent. I've named it Wenatchee Apple, and it has notes of apple, patchouli, and cedarwood. And it's not your typical apple scent in that it's apple that hits you right in the face and you smell it and you're like, yep, that's apple. This has so many other notes in there, but the overall sense is that you are walking underneath an apple tree in harvest time. And it's just magical. It's, it's a really good scent. And I'm using these beautiful vessels from Moor Rouge Canada, the Jasper jars. And here is what this looks like, the peach jar labeled. And it is so pretty. And I'll show you what the blue jar looks like as well. Wenatchee is a region or a city in Washington state that is known for their apples. And I, it's handy to have someone like Kale who has grown up in Washington to be able to help me name these scents. All right, so here is the blue version. I think it looks really pretty. And when I list this candle, I'll have a choice of the color jar that you want so that you can pick blue or the pink jar. So for the Wenatchee Apple, I only have it available in either the peach or the light blue. The pumpkin patch candles will be in the darker jasper jar color. So the olive, the black, and the white jars. Yeah. 
And for the pumpkin scent, I just went with a very literal scent name, Pumpkin Patch, because I think this one is going to be a favorite. I think it's gonna sell the best out of all the candles. And for my tester candle, I had different fonts, but for these guys, I'm gonna go for the more minimalistic branding. See how it does. Here is how that looks in the olive jar. Yes, I do understand that these labels on a black jar like this is not going to show up very well, if at all. But when you burn these candles, the font is going to show as it burns down. So I'm, I'm okay with it not uh, showing up super prominently. Here, I'll show you what that looks like. You can see it a little bit. Actually, it's not like it's going to be invisible. You will have a ghost of a label on there. And the labels that I'm using are from online labels. And I designed everything on Illustrator. So you can kind of almost see it. On these jars, a printer that does white font, which my printer doesn't do that, but it could if I bought the special ink that HP uses to make the white um, font or white print. That would look really good on this jar. But I haven't made the jump to getting that white ink. I would love to someday, but I don't think I'm quite there yet. It's expensive. <laughs> and my packaging right now, I don't know if it, if I absolutely need the white font just yet. These pumpkin patch candles kind of give Halloween vibes with the black, with the black jars. The next candle scent that I made is called Burgundy Fig. And this is a fig, vanilla, and patchouli scent. And this smells so good. This is my favorite of the scents that I made for candles. I didn't think I would be a fig scent fan, but this smells so good. It, it smells expensive. It smells like how you would want your home to smell if you're hosting a party or if you're just um, curling up next to the fire with a book. This is the candle that I would want to be burning for that because it's so cozy, it's so clean and so fresh. There's a familiarness to it, but it's also unique at the same time. And this fragrance oil is also More Rouge Canada. This is their Velvet Figs and Amber scent. Highly recommend. It's a magical scent. I'm, I'm truly, truly in love with it. So here's that More Rouge Canada Jasper jar in the sandy gray color or the white frosted color. It does have a gray tinge to it. I really like it. I think it has a different vibe to it than like a clear straight sided jar. Hello and welcome back down to the studio. For the launch that's coming up, I wanted to bring back one of my most successful products from last year's fall launch. And that is the pumpkin apple butter, emulsified body butter. <laughs> it's kind of a mouthful, but this product was so successful. I had people, after each time it was sold out, who were requesting that I stock it up. And whenever I did, they would buy multiple jars. They loved it so, so much. So we're bringing it back. I'm trying a different recipe for it, but it will still be amazing, I promise. So let's go ahead and get that going. So the first step is measuring out my water face ingredients. And this recipe is a really pared down, very simple, recipe. I think even beginners can do it. It's so simple. But we're going to start with some distilled water. I always use distilled water when it comes to making any type of skincare. It's the water that's free of all that stuff that can be found in tap water, like the minerals and other gunky things. It's very, very clean. And don't put your distilled water aside just yet. We're going to need the distilled water that evaporates out of this when we heat it up, we're gonna have to reintroduce it back in. So put the water not away. <laughs> My English is not really good right now. Um, and then next, we're gonna add some sodium lactate. You can add sodium lactate to your soap so that it makes a harder bar of soap and it makes unmolding a lot easier. I like to add sodium lactate to my creams because it's actually a humectant that draws moisture to the skin. It's a really, really lovely ingredient. It also helps to thicken the cream just a little bit. And the last water phase ingredient that I'm adding is allantoin. Don't want to use too much. A little goes a long way. Now we're going to weigh this entire, this whole thing. 
the stuff inside of it as well as the container so that we can measure it again after we've heated it up and re-add that water weight back in. Turn that off unnecessarily. All right, and then you're gonna wanna note that down somewhere. All right, we're gonna get this heated up, but before I put that on heat, I'm gonna measure out my, my oil phase ingredients. And this is also very pared down, very simple. It's gonna be mostly hemp seed oil, but there's gonna be also some shea butter in there to thicken that cream, make it more of a body butter consistency. I'm using refined and deodorized shea butter today so that the fragrance oil that I'm using doesn't compete with that scent of shea butter. So to help mix these butters and oils with that water, we need an emulsifier. And the emulsifier that I'm using today is Reed Emuls. And I really love this emulsifier for more luxurious feeling creams. It absorbs a little bit better than the other emulsifiers. And it also helps thicken the cream to a consistency that just feels amazing. I love it. Next, we're gonna add my favorite carrier oil, hemp seed oil. And it's this gorgeous emerald color. And hemp seed oil has so many things inside of it that your skin loves, but one of the best things about it is that it doesn't clog your pores. So you can hydrate using hemp seed oil without worrying that it's going to gunk up your skin. It's a very light oil that absorbs quickly and leaves this amazing finish afterwards. And the last ingredient we're adding is, or sorry, the last ingredient to our oil phase that we're adding is isopropyl meristate. Like hemp seed oil, it adds hydration without a heavy feeling, but it takes it a step further. It actually finishes kind of dry. So it helps with your creams not feeling as heavy or as greasy as they could be. And with the shea butter, I think that's important. And it's so light, it kind of, it's like water. Now, both of these phases need to heat up to at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. And then once they get to that temperature, we're gonna combine them. We're gonna stick blend them together and then that'll be our cream. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll come back once that's ready to be done. <laughs> so we have our oil phase completely melted and above 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I held it at that heat for a couple of more minutes and I did that to ensure that everything is melted. We're working with shea butter. So we wanna be really careful that we work with it in a way that it doesn't lead to a grainy body butter. So that's what I usually do. Um, right now I'm measuring out my water phase ingredients. I'm seeing how much weight I lost from evaporation. And I'm gonna replace that water with some more heated distilled water. That was the microwave I had been zapping this water in <laughs> to get it to a hot temperature. So let's go ahead and get that back up to where it was. And you'll be surprised at how much water evaporates. It's quite a bit. So now we're ready to combine the two phases together and emulsify it using a stick blender. So it is actually the next day and I didn't film it, but I did add my cool down ingredients already. I added my vitamin E, I've added some preservative so that the lotion doesn't start to get rotten <laughs> and mold. And this is the consistency that you get. Let me bring you closer for that. How beautiful is this cream? And that is what I love about Rita Mulls. It produces such thick, beautiful, and gorgeous emulsions. And it really is such a dream when you work with it. Love, love Rita Mulls. So now the next step is to add my fragrance oil and to add my zinc oxide so that I can make it into a zinc oxide cream. So I'm gonna be adding the zinc oxide at this point. So for this cream, I'm using 5% zinc oxide, but you can build up all the way up to, I think 20% is the max, but I just like five. And what I do is I just add it to my lotion like so. And the next step is to add my scent. And for this cream, I'm using a pumpkin apple butter scent. Now we're going to stir everything in. 
and we're just going to stir until everything is incorporated and you don't see any more of that powder. So if you're finding it hard to mix in the clumps of the zinc oxide, don't be afraid to put it into a mixer and let the mixer do the heavy stirring for you and you will get a beautiful smooth lotion or body butter at the end of that. And isn't this the most gorgeous consistency? Oh my gosh, love that. So now we're going to pipe the stuff into our jars. Okay, these body butters are amazing. Wow, the texture is so dreamy, so fluffy, like a body butter should be. And I'm going to quickly demo it for you guys today so you can see how fast it absorbs and how it applies on the skin. Let me get my gloves off. Here is the arm, or my arm. Apply a little bit over there and smooth it over and then work it in. And remember it has that zinc oxide in there. So this lotion is gonna have a soaping effect, but it's minimal. You see it's already being absorbed into the body and you will feel something left behind and that's the zinc oxide forming a protective barrier over your skin. It's an ingredient that's used widely in sunscreen, but what we're making here is not sunscreen. I want that to be clear. Sunscreen is a product that's been tested and has been proven to actually protect your skin from the sun. What we've made here is a protective barrier cream that I can't promise you if it protects from the sun or not, but <laughs> look how beautiful the finish is. It's gonna be soft and light and just a perfect powdery, dewy feel after it's been absorbed into the skin. If you're interested in making this protective zinc oxide barrier cream, you can find the steps to that on my Patreon, which is linked down below. There are over a hundred recipes on there and also so many other makers like yourself that are all active and engaging with the content that I post on there. And that's also a place where you can contact me and ask me questions about anything, about creams like this, about soap making, about bath bomb making, and you will get a guaranteed answer that's detailed and thought out, guaranteed on my Patreon. And speaking of my Patreon, thank you so much to my patrons who have chosen to support me on there. You guys are amazing, especially these guys, my Bubble BFFs, your support. I, I can't do what I do without you guys, so thank you so, so much. But that is the video today. I hope, like me, you guys are getting super psyched and excited for fall. I am definitely. I'm looking forward to my launch. By the time I release the next video, that launch would have happened, I think. So that's super exciting. I'm looking forward to getting these fall products up there so that they can be available for you guys and for my customers. So stay tuned and keep an eye out for that. And I really hope if you liked this content that you join me for my next video. And until that next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome and keep making beautiful things like pumpkin apple butter, body butter. Bye guys.